Imagine pushing physics to the absolute edge, not to the edge of galaxies, not to the edge of black holes, to the edge of reality itself, the point beyond which the universe does not allow further answers. That edge is what physicists call the Planck Wall, the deepest boundary of knowable reality. If you try to ask what lies beyond it, equations stop talking. Space-time stops behaving. Causality loses meaning. The very grammar of physics collapses. To understand why, we need to rewind the scale of existence. Start with meters, then micrometers, then nanometers, the world of DNA and transistors. Keep shrinking. 10 to the minus 12. Picometers, where atoms live. 10 to the minus 15. Femtometers, where protons live. 10 to the minus 18. Atometers, where quarks and gluons vibrate. Then 10 to the minus 20. 10 to the minus 25. The scale where high-energy particle physics loses grip. And then, at 1035 meters, everything shatters. That number has a name, the Planck length. It is not just very small. It is the smallest length that physical meaning can have. Below it, there is no smaller. Not because we lack microscopes, but because below that scale, the concept of space stops being definable. That is the Planck wall. To see why this boundary exists, combine the two great pillars of modern physics, quantum mechanics and general relativity. Quantum mechanics demands fluctuations. Nothing is perfectly still, not even vacuum. Relativity demands geometry. Mass curves space-time. Now shrink a region so tiny that these two rules attack each other. To measure a point that small, you would need an absurdly high-energy photon. But if you pack that much energy into a Planck-sized box, relativity says the energy density will collapse the region into a micro-black hole. That means, trying to see smaller literally creates a hole that hides what you are trying to see. The universe enforces an observational censorship. Below Planck scales, reality becomes self-concealing. That is why physicists say the Planck wall is not a technological limit. It is a principled limit. A blockade built into the laws of existence. Now extend the logic to time. The Planck time, around 10 to 43 seconds, is the smallest interval in which before and after can still mean something. Anything faster is not a duration. It is physically nonsensical. If you ask what happened before 10 to 43 seconds after the Big Bang, you are asking a grammatically invalid question. Time evolution stops being definable. Cause and effect dissolve at the Planck wall. Beyond it, our mathematics speaks nonsense. Then comes the most brutal implication. At the Planck wall, space-time is no longer continuous. The smooth fabric Einstein described cannot survive that resolution. Instead, theories propose that space-time is grainy, discrete, pixelated, not like Lego bricks sitting in a grid, but more like a fluctuating probabilistic foam of quantum geometry, where distances, angles, and even dimensionality are statistical outcomes, not fixed scaffolding. Some models replace space with spin networks, some with causal sets, some with strings, some with loops, some with holographic codes, but all agree on one fact. Below the Planck scale, Geometry is not a thing. And this is where the word unknowable matters. Most of physics is unknown but knowable. For example, we do not yet know what dark matter is, but it is in principle knowable. Experiments could reveal it. But the Planck wall is different. It is a boundary between knowable physics and in principle unrecoverable reality. Even a god-tier lab cannot circumvent it, because the universe dynamically erases any attempt to look past it, collapsing any probe into a singularity. Reality protects its own opacity. This has consequences for the deepest puzzles, the origin of space-time, the interior of black holes, the initial instant of the Big Bang. All of these domains live behind the Planck wall. That is why cosmologists say... 
we do not know what happened at T0. We only know physics from T he to 10 to 43 seconds onward. Everything prior is not hidden in the usual sense. It is undefined by the laws we have. It is not part of the map of cognition. But physics does not surrender. By studying what happens near the wall, near singularities, near event horizons, in high-energy scattering, theorists try to reverse-engineer what the sub-Planck regime must be like. String theory says space-time dissolves into vibrating entities in higher dimensions. Loop quantum gravity says area and volume are quantized, and space-time is woven from Planck-sized quanta. Holography says the inside might be an illusion, and the universe is encoded on a boundary. As different as these ideas are, they all share a single thesis. Space-time is emergent, not fundamental. That is the philosophical bomb hidden inside the Planck wall. If space and time are emergent, then asking, what lies deeper than the Planck scale, is like asking, what lies behind the pixels of a digital photo? There is no deeper geometry, only a deeper code. So the Planck wall is not just a scale. It is a transition in ontology, from geometry to information, from continuum to discreteness, from physics to metaphysics. It is the line where the universe stops being a stage and becomes a computation. And standing at that line, staring into the conceptual void beyond it, one confronts a chilling possibility. Maybe the universe is not built to be fully intelligible. Maybe built into the laws of nature is not just structure, but a deliberate veil, a mathematical censorship that prevents complete transparency. Not because nature is malicious, but because total transparency is mathematically inconsistent with existence. That is the Planck wall, the deepest limit of knowable reality. Not a technological ceiling, but a logical one. A horizon beyond which questions lose meaning, geometry loses identity, and physics hits the error message at the core of the universe.